Glib Audio Stories presents The Psychic, Episode 9, by Silas Scott and Pinkleet. Rob had started to assume Gideon just didn't want him around anymore. He contemplated leaving, but wasn't currently making enough money to be on his own. That, and somewhere inside him, he still held on to that little bit of hope that maybe Gideon still cared about him. It should have been obvious, considering he hadn't been evicted yet, but... Rob's mind warped the truth. Rob would hear a loud knock at the door of his place. He jumped at the knock, but hurried to the door and looked out to the people to see who it was. An unknown man in a suit and glasses would be standing outside Rob's door. Rob's forehead creased, but he opened it. The man smiled at Rob. Mr. Byrne, I'm Marcus Kramer. I'm the lawyer hired for your assault case. Rob licked his lips nervously. Hi, he'd say cautiously. May I come in? Marcus asked. Rob rubbed his face, but moved to the side. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Kramer would nod, stepping inside. He walked to the table, setting his briefcase down and opening it up. Now, it's a pretty straightforward case unless it's determined that it was attempted murder. I'll need to know more about your relationship with Miss Gordon, though. Rob sighed and pressed his lips together. We were friends for a while. Do you, uh... Want some coffee? No, thank you. I'm on a cleanse, he'd say. How long did you two know each other? Rob nodded and went to make some coffee for himself anyway. Couple years. We were, uh, lovers for like a year. Like three years ago. Were you living together while you two were intimate? Marcus asked. Rob shook his head simply. No. Kramer would nod. How long since you last interacted with her? Oh, God, about three years, I guess. And do you have any idea why she would attack you? Kramer asked. Rob shook his head and punctuated a nope. Hmm, all right then, Kramer said, jotting something down. And did you two leave on good terms? Rob licked his lips and bit his bottom lip. Not exactly, but I mean... I didn't think she wanted me dead. Can you tell me what happened the last time you saw her? He asked, looking up at Rob. I don't remember much, Rob admitted. We didn't screw. She came over and she said she wanted to be with me. Like, be with me, not just fucking. He poured some coffee into a cup and sat down across from the lawyer with it. I turned her down and he shrugged. Never spoke to her again. Okay. Kramer said with a nod, thinking for a moment. What can you tell me about the incident? What do you remember from that day? Rob shook his head. I was meeting my, uh, uh, a mutual friend, and she showed up. She started to say something, but I don't know what it was, and she just snapped, I guess. She stabbed me, said my name, said, fuck you, Rob. Who are you going to meet? The more details, the better I can help you, Mr. Burke. Rob sighed and sipped his coffee. My dealer? And what is his or her name? Kramer would ask. I'm not a snitch. Mr. Byrne, they could be a witness to the crime. We want them on our side. Rob sniffed. Tim. Don't know his last name. Hmm. All right, then. Kramer would say, jotting more down. Were you on any drug while you were meeting your dealer, or were you clean? I was clean. Didn't have any shit to take. Rob shrugged. Good, good. She was clean too, which means that puts more in our favor. Are you sure you can't remember what you two spoke of at all? Rob thought back, but ultimately shook his head. To be honest, it's all kind of a blur. Any details at all could help. She may claim self-defense against you, and if so, we need to prove her wrong. I mean, Rob said honestly, we didn't really talk. She started to, but then she just started screaming at me and skewered me like a kebab. What exactly did she say? Every and any detail is important. Oh God, I don't remember. It's important that you do, Mr. Byrne. We need to be on top with this, he said plainly. Rob would say flatly, well, I'm sorry I can't remember the details of a major trauma. Hmm. 
Hammer would say, frowning slightly. Do you have a therapist you talk to at all? Uh, yeah. Good. I think you should talk to them, see if they can help you remember what was said. I'll see what legal representation Miss Gordon has, and if there was any security cameras in the area that can help our case. Rob nodded inside. Sounds fine. Oh, here's my card if you need to reach me. But I will be in touch, Mr. Byrne. Kramer said, handing Rob a card with his name and number. Rob took the card. Thanks. Kramer would give Rob a nod, packing up his briefcase and leaving the apartment. Rob sighed and leaned on the door once it was closed again. It was then that Rob got a call from the front desk. He let out a heavy sigh. He did not want to see another person right then. Couldn't the world just leave him alone? But when he learned who it was, all the stress of the day so far seemed to wash away in a wave of relief. Yeah, yeah, let him in, he said quickly, moving to wash his face. Rob would answer the door at a... Standing on the other side of the doorway, a beautiful, blonde-haired, blue-eyed man opened his arms. Hey, babe. Rob would flip his arm underneath the other man's arm, leaving a soft kiss on his stubble cheek and leading him in. Rob locked the door behind them. Gideon wouldn't reach out to Rob. Rob probably didn't want to talk to him anyway. He made it clear that he didn't trust Gideon all because of one stupid vision. It only furthered Gideon's belief that no one could really love him. Oh well, he was used to it. He would open the door to his apartment, walking out to head to work. Romeo had left for the day a couple months later, but something he had said had stuck with Rob. You should talk to him. Maybe he's scared to talk to you, and you'll never know what's going on in his head unless you ask. God, the man was always right. Rob talked through his problems with him often, and Romeo did the same with Rob. Although Rob thought Romeo gave the best advice, he had always deemed his own as shit, even though Romeo always assured that his was just as good, and that he appreciated the advice even when it wasn't the best. They had been talking about Gideon when Romeo gave this particular tidbit, and how did it come up? Rob had been feeling... bad. He thought the man hated him, though Romeo assured him that just the fact that he still lived in the apartment with him was proof that he didn't. But in Rob's mind, he was being shunned. Again like when he was a child. You're not being shunned, Romeo would reason. Rob, he obviously still cares about you. Have you ever thought that maybe he's just afraid to talk to you? I'm afraid to talk to him. And maybe he feels like he's being shunned? Rob had gone completely silent at that. No, he hadn't thought about that. So here Rob stood in front of Gideon's door, palms sweating as he knocked. There was no response at first, the silence of the hallway engulfing the room. Then Gideon's door would open. Rob? he asked, slightly confused. Rob looked his lips nervously inside. Can I come in? Gideon would nod, stepping out of the way for Rob to enter the apartment. Rob entered and looked around a bit. Gideon, it's been brought to my attention that you might not be shunning me, and you might be waiting for me to talk first. So here I am, I'm talking. Gideon would shut the door behind Rob, turning to look at him. I didn't think you wanted to talk to me. Rob would stand there silently for a minute, then... I didn't think you wanted to talk to me. Why would I not want to talk to you? Gideon asked, confused. Because you're mad at me? Rob blinked, also confused. Why would I be mad at you? Gideon asked. He took a step towards Rob, his hands slightly fumbling with each other. Rob looked at him curiously. Because I told you about the vision? He asked, confused. He was used to being asked to explain his apologies, but he always worried he would get it wrong. I'm not mad about your vision, Rob, Gideon said, almost indifferent. I told you I'm not mad. Then why are you shunning me? Gideon let out a sigh. I'm not shunning you, Rob. I just... I'm just giving you your space away from me. I don't want you to be more afraid of me. Rob would pause. You think I'm afraid of you? I saw how you looked at me. Saw the fear you had of me. Seeing whatever you did see, he said with a small smile, though he seemed somewhat defeated. I'm sorry that I terrified you. Rob rubbed his face. Oh, 
God, Gideon, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I'm not afraid of you. I was scared of my vision. I was scared of it coming true and that telling you I make it come true, but I'm not scared of you. And even if I was terrified in the moment, that's gone now. I know my vision was wrong. You were scared of what you saw me do, Gideon said with a slight shrug, his hands going into his pockets. Well, yeah, Rob sighed. It was pretty gruesome. But that doesn't mean I'm scared of you. Your power, maybe, a little bit, but you're still one of the most powerful psionics I've ever met, but I'm not scared of you. You're a good person, I know that. Even if you do some scary shit or bad shit, you're still good at heart, and I trust you. You're like a father to me, Gideon. I've seen the good in you, everything you've done to help me, even though I'm kind of a piece of shit and probably don't deserve it, and you have no reason to help me, but you did. I could never not trust you. Gideon's face had been torn into one of surprise. He had never heard anyone say that to him, ever. It was strange in a good way. He would pull his hands out of his pockets and step towards Rob. Rob he said, though he was clearly at a loss for words. He would extend his arms out, embracing Rob. Rob opened his mouth to say something, but he himself lost his words as he was suddenly embraced. Well, he was not expecting that. Huh, yeah, was all he could think to say as he pat the other's back. I'm sorry you thought I was shunning you. I would never do that, not to you, Gideon said, still hugging Rob. Rob would pull away and look down. You shouldn't shun anyone. I don't, at least not intentionally, Gideon said, looking at Rob. Rob sent a small smile up at him. Good. So, he said awkwardly, how have you been? Gideon let out a sigh. Work's been tough recently, he said, not elaborating any further. How have you been? Rob nodded, sighing. As long as you're okay. I've been fine. Great, actually. Oh? Gideon said with an amused smile. What happened then? It's all been great, he'd say with a playful nudge of his elbow. Rob shrugged, looking a little flustered. You know, got a job, got a, uh, he cleared his throat. Boyfriend? A boyfriend? Gideon asked, still smiling. I'm happy for you, Rob. What's his name? Rob snorted. You're not going to believe this. It's Romeo. I thought he was kidding at first, too. Gideon would raise an eyebrow. Romeo? Yeah. Rob let out a short, nervous laugh and rubbed the back of his head. <laughs> Romeo Jules. Are his parents really into Shakespeare? Gideon said with a chuckle. Rob would laugh a bit longer. Who knows? I mean, he probably does, but I never asked. We only met, like, a month ago. How much do you know about him, then? Gideon asked, a small tilt of his head. He's sweet. Grew up in the gay community with two moms. I haven't met them yet. He went to NYU's medical department. Works at the hospital up the road now. The one I stayed at when Dad pushed me down the stairs. Apparently, it's one of the best in the country. While he was in school, he worked in an escape room. He's still friends with the manager. Got me a job there. It's pretty cool, actually. Rob shrugged. I'm glad he makes you happy, Rob, Gideon said with a smile. When do I get to meet him? He chuckled. Rob paused, then shrugged. He comes over a lot. You're welcome to stop by sometime. I might take you up on the offer. Ask him a few questions. Make sure he's honorable. Gideon said with a cheerful look on his face. It was clear he was planning to do the whole dad spin with learning about the new romantic partner. Rob cocked a brow. You don't have to interrogate my boyfriend. He's a good guy, and he loves me. That's more than I could say for any of my past lovers. Gideon would look at Rob, a smile on his face. He'd then speak softly. I'm glad that you found someone, Rob. Someone that loves you back and treats you right. Rob would smile back at the man. Me too. I can't wait for you to meet him. He's sweet. God, he's sweet. I told him about my past and, you know, he didn't hate me for it. He didn't think I was gross or impure. Because you're not gross or impure. Those are lies that the church told people to keep them in line. 
Gideon said, waving his hand clearly annoyed with the church. It's not true at all. Rob smiled toward Gideon, a glint in his eye. You know, that's exactly what he said. But it's not just the church who told me things like that. Whoever did tell you that is wrong, Rob. You left because you knew deep down they were wrong. You shouldn't believe it. Rob looked down and laughed a little. You're right, but you know, that's easier said than done. I know, I know, he said, patting Rob on the shoulder. Rob let out a long sigh. His voice was almost wistful now. I can't wait for you to meet him. I'm excited to meet him too, Gideon said, then chuckling. Ava's going to have a field day with all this info. Oh God, Ava's going to be so excited. Gideon nodded, smiling. She's a lot taller than the last time you saw her. And her powers have grown too. She could suppress the whole block if she really tried. Oh, wow. Is she still so bubbly? Rob laughed. If she wasn't, she wouldn't be Ava, Gideon said with a chuckle. That's true. I miss her. She was a good kid. They caught up for a couple of hours, and then Rob went home. Gideon did take him up on the offer, stopping by to meet Romeo later that weekend. The court case happened in sort of a blur. As it turned out, Melissa Gordon had gotten pregnant by Rob, and with her being poor and in debt and having no family to help her with income or take care of the baby, she had made the hard decision to abort the baby. This took a major toll on her mental well-being, and when she'd finally seen Rob again, she'd snapped. Gordon pleaded insanity and was sent to the Riverside Hospital for the criminally insane, a high-security mental health facility near the Hudson River, and Rob still visits her regularly. Romeo and Rob grew closer over the next couple of years and eventually decided to get married. And everything seemed fine. You have just finished The Psychic, Episode 9, End of Season 1. Thanks for watching!